Should women who are going through the menopause be given flexible hours to cope? If you had a difficult night, you might think how lovely, but the Labour Party has put forward a policy for better workplace support for the 3.4 million women suffering with symptoms like hot flushes, night sweats, headaches, all sorts of problems. Yeah, we're joined now by former pop star Michelle Heaton, who experienced early menopause aged 35 and believes the workplace should support menopausal women. And broadcasting journalist Eve Pollard, who fears making exceptions for menopausal women will alienate employers. Um, it must be a, a, an extraordinarily difficult period to go through your life anyway, but to have gone through the early menopause, Michelle, must have been really difficult for you. Yeah, I mean, I suppose now, thank goodness, education in schools is going to be available for menopause um, in um, in physical education and in sexual education, which is amazing. Would it have but, helped that never you if had you'd had my day. to leave? Would Absolute. you have helped you something like this? I think, that, I think that the more education that we can get would make us not suffer in silence, which would that which might have a knock-on on turn on how employees and employers cope with it at work. So maybe it's not about definitely defining leave when you're going through symptoms. It's about understanding more so that maybe the leave could be more discretionary to the employers. What's your concern? Well, uh, I've been for 16 years the vice chairman of a charity called Wellbeing of Women. We look after women's gynaecological health. All our money goes to research. You're quite right. Um, I don't agree with leave because I think for a middle-aged woman to get a job is pretty hard. And then they'll look at her and say, she might have the menopause soon and she'll take days off. Let's hire the 25-year-old, mm. which they might prefer to do anyway. So, I mean, I think it's very hard. But what is interesting is we are talking about this subject mm. on television. Yeah. It used to be a taboo subject. What is also true, only this week I um, hosted a big thing for Liz Earle, who's just written a book mm. about mm. the menopause, we are so badly advised in this country. I mean, she explained about oestrogen being the hormone we all need that makes us calm, that makes us feel we can accomplish something. When that leaves, I've been told the oestrogen has left the building, you need to have replacement. And terrible PR mm -hmm. about HRT and, and cancer. The yeah, exactly. Have, and there are not enough special doctors, and I, mean, I don't expect GPs to learn this, mm. but special doctors who know all about it, and I would say, look at our website. There's um, Liz Earle's written a book, and there's a doctor called Dr Louise Newsom. See, I think me and Eve are in a total agreement that we're talking about it, so we've already come, you know, leaps and bounds from where we all were years and years ago. Um, but we've come so far, why are we stopping with just, just giving education? And I agreed with you what you're saying, that it's really difficult for women of a certain age to get jobs, but you could say the same for women who are fertile, about to have yes, babies. Yes, and that battle has so been my, fought really yeah, hard. Yeah, that's, that's my that's argument is, why should women who are about to be in menopause be discriminated against by getting jobs when women were discriminated against by getting jobs when they were fertile. It's the same thing. It's about fertility and it's about the only what thing, our body is producing. My only point is, and so I, I, I sort of I agree, I mean, women are given a hard ride all together, aren't they? But number one, it's great we're here talking about yeah. it. It's really extraordinary. It's great. Two, pregnancy normally lasts nine months a year, you know. Yeah, but then, then there's the pregnancy but, leave and then there's... Yes, yeah, but, you but, know, but people sort that out. Depression. I mean, you, but you sort yeah. that out and companies have rules. But I don't see the difference when we're talking if about you're something that's a... natural and our hormones are being but made I don't to want, make us feel, feel a certain But I don't way. want the women to suffer... Me neither. So that, no, so that they do have to take time off when there are things that will help them. They're not available necessarily in the national health. We don't know enough about them. You go and see your GP and he looks at you and he says, well, just take the lowest dose. But you might mm -hmm. need the highest dose. Absolutely. So it's about getting the solutions out there for people. Yeah, that's what I think. Right. We and do agree. If there's solutions, then we wouldn't need lots this. Lots of people but getting involved with this. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie says, definitely, I ended up having to take medical leave due to the menopause. Brain fog is something that prevented me from doing my job. Uh, but then you've got Linda says, I went to work, never missed a shift. So it's a no from me. Uh, Bill says, women demand equal rights, fair enough, and then want to be treated differently. <laughs> Oh, hang on. When they've had right. a I'd like over, to, I'd like and to come through, in. They're going for the Ferrari ride. Right? Yes. Sometimes they can make an excuse. The thing too. is, at least we've opened the discussion, which yeah. is brilliant. And whoever were the women in the Labour Party who raised this, yeah. I commend them because it must have been quite difficult to get that past that front bench at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I totally <laughs> agree. See how far it goes. Yeah. Uh, Look, we appreciate you coming and joining us this morning. Thank, Thank you very much indeed.